Good evening. Hello. Here we are, hopefully. Hopefully, well. Everything will work out again tonight. Hope so. Yes. We'll just uh, wait a minute or two whilst um, it starts to go live on the internet. Here's the goal. Go. Good stuff. Gosh, I got onto that really quite yeah. quickly. Yeah, I am. Yeah. So, good evening. Good evening. Six people watching. Good. <laughs> Hopefully everything will be uh, okay uh, this evening. <laughs> I hope so. Have you got it? Got a tiny little one. Got a tiny little one. Yay! Yeah. Right, there we go. Hello, everybody. Here we are. Excellent. So, so we're, we're live this week. <laughs> yeah, this week. <laughs> um, Hopefully you can tell. <laughs> We can't tell any different. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's for that. Okay. okay. So, announcements, you can have your cup of tea at any time. At any time. Uh, just remember to come back. Can't pause us this week. No. Nope. <laughs> um, so, what's happened? Well, we had a lovely time of worship this morning. Um, we had a dedication. We did. We dedicated four children and one family. The oldest is 15. The youngest is about six or seven months, mm -hmm. uh, so that was lovely. Epi and Jenny, and uh, we had a lovely. That's the mum and dad. <laughs> so what were the what's the children's names? I'll put you on the spot. Luciana. Yep. Latia. Yes. Amelia. Yes. Zach. Yes. Well done. And the son of is Vuka, Vuka Thea. <laughs> so there you go. Indeed. <laughs> so it was really good. We had a lovely time of worship, and uh, we were able to share with family. Um, in Fiji and Australia. Australia, we did a a private message live stream so that they could yes. uh, could join us. So that was really good. So it being something which would involve children, um, we couldn't put it on Facebook generally, which we would have normally done, or would we, we would have put it on YouTube, but yeah. we can't because it was specifically um, involving children. So we created a small group for the family, and that was really good yeah. for us to be able to share with them. Fiji, quite handily, is 12 hours ahead of us. <laughs> so whilst yes. we were starting at half past ten in the morning... It was half past ten. We were watching at half past ten at night. <laughs> yes. But it was good. So we had a lovely time. Um, and it was good to see them coming and joining with us. Um, uh, this week we have got a prayer meeting on Tuesday night. We have Food Bank on Wednesday and Friday, 9 till 12. We Care on Wednesday afternoon and uh, this last week they had seven new children so uh, we are absolutely thrilled about that because Bruce and I went there but uh, maybe that's why they that's came. That's why they came. <laughs> um, so that's really good and that's really positive so we look forward to sharing and meeting the new mums this week. Uh, Wednesday night we have songs as an end band and then next Sunday in person worship at 10.30 in the morning and next Sunday evening will be a recorded service again. Did you say Saturday morning? Oh, Saturday morning, we've got a coffee morning. <laughs> tea and cake, coffee, tea, coffee, cake for two fifty, one fifty for children. So if you're in Inverness next Saturday... What time? Is it 10 till 12? I don't know. It's either 10 or half past 10, I can't remember. <laughs> I was listening to the announcements oh, this yeah. morning. Yeah. If any Inverness people are watching, could you just... Give us the time, give us the the time for the morning, coffee please. morning. Thank you. <laughs> There's so many things going through my head when announcements are on in the morning, particularly. Yeah, well, this morning I was getting those names right. That was my that was my whole thing. I was making sure we were set up for Australia yeah. and Fiji. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I hope you've all had a good week. Uh, we certainly have. And um, we might just share a thing or two about what I we did we this will. week. <laughs> we might just tell you all our holiday secrets. Not all of them. No, I don't think Some so. of them. Some of them. Okay. So, welcome uh, to Worship This Evening. Uh, and uh, we are going to celebrate Mother's Day. And uh, that will be good to be able to yes. share 
with all you mums out there and all you women of influence and you and the men too. <laughs> uh, it's good to have you too. Right. Yes, I, right, I'm gonna start. Do you really mean that? Yes I do. I'm right. Glad to hear Song it. number one oh one six. My goodness. I know. Home is home, however lonely. Home is sweet when love is there. Home is home when hearts are holy. Earth is there a spot so fair. Jesus makes a home a heaven, sacred in the fireside warm. After battling through the long day, home's a shelter from the storm. Home is home, however lonely. Home is sweet when love is there. Home is home when hearts are holy. Earth has never a spot so fair. Of all my heaven, sacred in the first I born. After battling through the long day, homes a shelter from the storm. To a little home in Bethlehem, Jesus loved to wend his way. Waiting for him in the evening of the day. Jesus, there to stop the sadness, there the humble will be blessed. There they worshipped him with gladness, and his sacred form would Our home, the threshold of the city, bright and fair. Each the other's joy possessing, each the other's bed and share. In the storm of deep affliction, let us seek the heavenly balm. In life's tempest, just remember, prayer will make the storm a calm. And right at the start of our worship, we're going to share together in prayer. Father God, we just thank you again this evening that we're able to share in this way that day, as we are maybe many miles apart. We are joined together by your love and we thank you for that this evening. Today we have celebrated mothers and uh, women who have influenced our lives. We pray today, Lord, for those who perhaps find Mother's Day difficult. We pray, Lord, that you'll surround them with your love, that they might know your presence with them just where they are. We think of those who have been bereaved. We pray, Lord, that uh, you will surround them with your love, fill their, their lives with your spirit, that as they have this difficult time, that they might know you walking with them. We thank you, Lord, that um, as we share in fellowship this evening, that we can open your word and uh, we can listen and learn much from what you have to say to us through your word. And so this evening, Lord, as we do open your word, we pray that you'll open our hearts to you and our minds, uh, and may you indeed speak to our hearts. Father, we just pray that you'll be with us in all we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes, this evening um, we would particularly encourage you to remember Gwyneth Allman in your prayers. Gwyneth quite often um, joins with us. Gwyneth's husband, um, Cyril, was promoted to glory this week. So please remember her in your prayers at this very difficult time. We're going to turn to another song number 127. Number 127. You might think I've gone mad, but then again, you might be there with me, so that's okay. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy, and they say that his name was Jesus. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy, the Virgin Mary had a baby boy, the Virgin Mary had a baby boy. And they know that his name was Jesus. He come from the glory. He come from the glorious kingdom. He come from the glory. He come from the glorious kingdom. Oh yes, believer. Oh yes, believer. 
sang when the baby born. The angel sang when the baby born. The angel sang when the baby born. And proclaiming the baby. about the baby being born to Mary. Now, before we go any further, remember next week the clocks go forward. Next Sunday morning the clocks go forward an hour in the UK, particularly important if you're watching us in a different country um, and you tune in and either it's going to be the wrong time or maybe we caught up with where you are because your clocks have gone forward already or they might not change at all. But please remember, next week, the clocks go forward here. And we're going to be recording for next week, aren't we? Yes. Yes, I'm yes. heading to London next week. You are. I am heading to London for the last teaching week. Okay. Bible reading. Bible reading. <laughs> I was ready to have a wee play there. Yeah. weren't you? Our scripture reading for this evening is taken from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, and we're going to read the first 14 verses. About that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child to him and put the child among them. Then he said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. So anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. But if you cause one of these little ones who trusts in me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to have a large millstone tied round your neck and be drowned into the depths of the sea. What sorrow awaits the world because it tempts people to sin? Temptations are inevitable. But what sorrow awaits the person who does the tempting? So if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better to enter eternal life with only one hand or one foot to be thrown into eternal fire with both of your hands and feet. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It's better to enter eternal life with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. 
Beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly Father. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, what will he do? Won't he leave the ninety-nine others on the hills and go out to search for the one that's lost? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he will rejoice over it more than over the ninety-nine that didn't wander away. In the same way, it's not my heavenly Father's will that even one of these little ones should perish. Amen. Amen. We're going to turn to song number 1015. All the big numbers. <laughs> big numbers and wee numbers. And in between. 1015. Happy the home when God is there and love fills every breast. Where one their wish and one their prayer and one their heavenly rest. Happy the home when God is there and love fills every breast. And one their wish and one their prayer and one their heavenly rest. Happy the home where Jesus name is sweet to Came back with a cold. <laughs> you did. I did. I'm waiting for it still. Ah. There you are. Hello, Megan. <laughs> Megan's on from Buckhaven. Yes. It's why since we've been there. I think, yes. I think probably um, it's because of <laughs> the change in temperatures <laughs> that we had well, all yes. We had sunshine, we had wind, we had rain, and we had snow. Uh huh. We did. Yes, we did. So. We arrived to our accommodation in South Shields and I am known for booking accommodation as cheaply as I possibly can. This was not the cheapest of the cheap, I have to tell you. This was the second cheapest of the cheap <laughs> because the cheapest of the cheap did not have internet access. So when we arrived, it was actually looking quite good. It was, yeah. Nice little flat, one bedroom. One bedroom flat. Living room. Galley kitchen, two loose. Yeah. And that was about it, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Windows were on the street. But it looked it okay. It looked absolutely fine. Yeah. Until you decided to switch the light on, was well, it? Well, I, I thought, I was doing to have a wee look in the shower room, so I put, went to switch the light and I thought, oh, brilliant, there's no, there's no light. And then I thought, but there is a bulb in there. And then I said, I don't think we've got electricity. <laughs> so we had no electricity. We tried all the lights and nothing. So I found a cupboard that had the uh, all the electricity stuff there to see if there was a fuse had blown, you know? No sign of any fuse having blown. So I pressed the button. You did. Which should have shown how much um, electricity was on the meter. And there was nothing. It showed absolutely nothing. The gas meter was in the same cupboard. I pressed that button and it showed there was about £41 or something on the gas. 
So I thought that's really strange that when I pressed the electric one, there was nothing. So I sent a, a message to the, the people who had rented the flat to us and waited. And then five minutes later, I sent another message and I kept repeating the process. And then I decided to try it different ways. So through the, the company that we booked it through, through all sorts of different ways, there was a um, Try, trying a WhatsApp group, so I tried to figure out how to do that, but... Yeah. Same. And, and there was a there was a, a, a wee key thing, so we went and put money on that, because we thought, well, maybe they've run out of credit on the electricity. So, so we went on to the shop? Yeah. Nothing. So, eventually, I managed to get in touch with the person who was um, our contact, and, of course, he wanted me to go and check that there were no fuses blown, so check there was no fuses blown he asked what, what it said on the meter and I said it's absolutely blank so he asked for some pictures so I took pictures showed him there's, the, there's, there's all the fuses in the right the place the batteries running down on the phone then I took the picture <laughs> send the picture and then I had to say but the battery it's getting dark it's starting to get dark now and the battery is starting to go on my phone it's down to I think 20, 20%, 20% yes yeah. so um he then said, well, I think we're just going to have to move you to another premises. We're going to upgrade you to three bedrooms just along the road. So that was fine. At no extra cost. At no extra cost, of course. So we piled everything back in the car, put the key back in the safe box where it was supposed to be and headed along the road to our new accommodation, which was much bigger. I think Yay. the sitting room was probably the size, the size of the, of the flat. flat. So we had a sitting room, a kitchen, a shower room. And two bedrooms on that floor and then up the flight, other flight of stairs and there was another bedroom with I don't know how many beds in it, about two or three beds in it. Um, so we actually scored a bit. We so, certainly did. But it wasn't getting funny when it was getting to six o'clock at night and we really needed to be, <laughs> after having driven down from Inverness. We needed to eat as well. We did. So we got in there. On Monday, you wanted to go shopping, didn't you? So the metro centre at Gateshead is there, so... We and, we, and we thought it was going to rain, so we thought, well, that's fine, we'll do that. Yes, so we headed over towards that, but on the way there, um, I'm still doing tracing family uh, history, so we stopped off at Bencham Hospital. I think it's Bencham Hospital. If there's anybody from that area, you could get, keep me right. Um, but part of that was the poor house, and, of course, my family would end up in the poor house at some point, and I think it was around about 1900, um, there was a member of my family ended up in there. So I said to Isabel when I came back, you know, this is the point where uh, on the who do you think they are, that they, they burst into tears because they're overcome with emotion that their family has been in that situation. Well, you know, it's something that I've seen repeated uh, a number of times uh, as, as I've gone through my family history. So we went from the poor house to uh, have a coffee at Marks and Spencer's. Marks and Spencer's at the... As I, I, that, that gave me the chance to kind of work through that. And then you went and spent some money, didn't I you? I did, I went and spent some yes. money. That was good. So but I do well. Monday was a, a good day. We, we went to another church where a great-great-grandfather had been um, baptised. And we went to the cemetery where there are a number of family members. And then home. Yeah, and the heavens opened. The heavens did. And we got soaked. Well, there we are. You ran back to the car. Well, no. you shuffled back to the shuffled car quickly. Shuffled back to the car quickly. <laughs> Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday was a surprise day because I was trying to meet up with lots of people and um, you know tried to to meet some friends and uh, I was told not Tuesday. Not Tuesday. Not Tuesday. First of all, on Tuesday, we went to a village called Slaley, where it turns out that my Great, 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 great grandfather uh, has a headstone which is the oldest in Northumberland. He died in 1635. So we walked all around St Mary's Church in Slaley looking for the headstone because I'd seen pictures of it outside with um, sort of vines growing beside it but couldn't see it. Nowhere to be seen. We went inside, we had a look inside the church, beautiful little church, and you stopped to take a picture of the stained glass window in the porch, didn't you? 
And as you were doing that, I looked behind her and there was the headstone, which had been taken inside the building. So we were able to get a, a photograph of that. So we went from there to Steel Hall Farm, which is where the family lived in 1600. I never thought I'd be able to get past <laughs> the end of this street on my family tracing, but 1600, the family lived at this farm, which is even by our terms, in the middle of nowhere. Yes. Yes. I mean, we the drove road. And drove. <laughs> and the road was not the wasn't case. a road anymore. <laughs> it was it was the mud track, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and and um, thinking if it's going to be too much further, I think we'll turn round. But we weren't there too fast. There were we piles of rocks either side yeah. of the road. There were um, farm trailers hidden amongst the trees, and I did wonder what we were going to. But eventually we came into a clearing after I said to Isabel, how much further? She said about 300 yards according to this. So our car wouldn't have gone much further on those kind of roads, so. well, on that kind of track rather. And uh, as we came to the farm, I could see the farmer in his barn and he came out to meet us. Yeah. And he was very friendly. So, so can I help you? I said, yeah, my family used to live here and he gave me a kind of funny look he said all oh, right I've lived here all my life I said yeah this was about 1600 <laughs> and he waits all oh, right so was your family such and such and I said no my family were Teasdales and he said right oh right yes I'll show you this then out of the car and he put said the, move, move your car up onto the concrete away out of the mud track and put, put my boots on because we were dressed up for what came next um, <laughs> put my boots on and he took me over to another part of the barn with the the lintel stone which had TT 1721 I think in it and this was a Thomas Teasdale who was a few generations closer to me than Richard Teasdale whose grave we'd been to see so obviously the family had been there there'd been a gap and they'd gone back to there and apparently They'd been quite wealthy at one point, unfortunately. It hadn't actually come down to us. <laughs> Never mind. But it, we had a good good weather, yeah. and uh, he told me he'd been up in Inverness and what a difference there was in it as a, a city. But uh, he loved where he was out in the countryside, and he talked about his lambing and all the rest, and he was in the middle of saying to some of the lambs there. So I let him get back to his work, and we moved on to where we were going. Slaley Hall. Slaley Hall for uh, a late birthday present for me uh -huh. <laughs> um, afternoon tea but we were having it at lunchtime because we were going out for dinner with somebody else at night mm -hmm. um, so we had um, beautiful um, afternoon tea the two of us in a room on our own it was lovely yes. and uh, quite posh actually <laughs> yeah well there was nobody to tell us that we weren't quite posh so no. I think we got away with it I think we did yes so that was a, a late birthday present for yeah. you. From there we went to Hexham. We did. We'd gone down to have a look before we got to Slaley Hall because we had a, we had a Just little bit too. Yeah. So we went and it was got the parking permit and everything that we needed and we had to be walk along the street and spend some money and uh, we went into the Abbey shop. A lovely Abbey in Hexham. We never got in the Abbey uh, because we went into the shop and somebody came in and said, oh, it started to rain a bit. And when we looked out, it was huge, mm -hmm. um, huge, huge snowflakes. And Bruce said, I think we need to get back. You certainly do. So we're, you know, in case we get stuck. So we had about half an hour in Hex. And so if we're ever back down that way, I think that's a place that I think we, we need to spend a bit longer We need to spend a bit longer time. there. I think so. Yes. Um, and then we were, we were going out. We had a well, meal with friends. Well, as we got near the coast, there was no snow. Oh. <laughs> um, which was fine and we were meeting what was that so what did we do on Martin's Day went to Newcastle we went to Newcastle we on the metro on the metro to leave Newcastle leave the car at home let the train take the train <laughs> into Newcastle and we had a, a wander around we I took a picture of the Cats Protection League shop because my great 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 <laughs> And I great, great, know. great... I don't know how many generations Four, four greats, grandfathers, <laughs> had lived where the Cats Protection League shop is in Clayton Street 
in Newcastle yeah, it looks, now. Looks all very nice, doesn't uh-huh. it? Yeah. So we had a, a trek round the shops there. We thought there'd been a bit of a Russian invasion. In <laughs> when we went for coffee in um, John, Lewis's. John Lewis's, yes. We saw a, a mobility scooter coming in, a red mobility scooter, mm-hmm. not too subtle. <laughs> uh, and a, an elderly gentleman wearing the, the furry hat with the, the Russian crest on it as well. And uh, we just wondered if this was an advance party. As far as I know, the Russians have not invaded um, Newcastle just yet. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was that was most of Wednesday, wasn't it? Yeah, and then we met your co- the, your mum's cousin Dougie. Yes, we met Dougie and Liz. Yeah, and that was lovely to have a meal with them. And then Thursday. Thursday. Thursday we went to Durham. We did. We went to Durham, um, and we had thought we might have gone into Durham, but when <laughs> the wife and the wee sat and after decided to take us a different route, <laughs> but we got we got to where we needed to be, and uh, we were meeting a very good friend of ours, Margaret Berry, drew her brother-in-law watches uh, from Thailand on a Sunday night. Uh, Margaret catches up later on YouTube; she doesn't yes. do Facebook. So, hello, Margaret. Hope you've had a good week, uh, and I'll be in touch soon. Uh-huh. She'll know what that's about, and. Um, we had, she had till three o'clock, so we met her at noon and then at three o'clock she had to go, she had a meeting um, and we just caught up on so much. Yes. Uh, Margaret and David were very good to us when we were young lieutenants, um, when we were at um, Kilmarnock, but more particularly when we were in East Kilbride, they were at Stonehouse and Lark Hall and Straven and then they moved to Wishaw. Wishaw. <laughs> I was trying to think, it began with W and it wasn't my flip. Wishaw. Um, and we kind of helped each other out um, and quite often on a Saturday we would find ourselves knocking on Margaret's door for some reason and she always used to say the Lord has sent you to me today because yes. David wasn't very well and he was anxious to do things so we just gave Ola to him Ola was a baby at the time um, and so we had a lovely time catching up with Margaret it was good to share and I hope it's not too long before we see her again yes, yes. on Friday, Friday we went to Jaro on the train on the, on the metro. On the metro again. And I walked in and went to the Salvation Army for the coffee morning. Yes. And what a welcome we got there. It was lovely. If if you're ever in Jarrow, Friday morning Half past nine. is the coffee morning and you will be assured of a very warm yes, welcome because was... everybody was given a very warm welcome. Yeah. Uh, how many times we have parked in the car park at Morrison's and not seen the Army Hall? And I didn't realise the cone was still open in Jarrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, in a conversation that we had with someone, we discovered that it was still open. So you had gone on to see. And the hall's just across from where Morrison's is. And uh, we had a lovely time there catching up with Gwyneth, the envoy, and her sister, um, and various others. And it was lovely. And uh, she came, she gave me a Mother's Day card. She was giving all the ladies Mother's Day cards. And she said, I'm giving one to everybody. Um, and it was so friendly and everybody made to feel so, so welcome. Just mm-hmm. a little core, but reaching out into that wee community. And it was really, really good to be able to share with them. But Jarrow was a place that um, was very closely linked with my family. So there were another three or four sites in Jarrow that we went and had a look at. And uh, were able to catch up with some other people there as well before yeah. we got on the metro. metro. Back to South Shields. To South Shields. Had a wander in South Shields, which we had done the day before, I think. We had kind of parked the car and had a, uh-huh. a wander. Um, and then we... Um, got on the we ferry. Got on the ferry at South Shields. Wow, that was just so exciting <laughs> for me. I could hardly control myself. I think Bruce is turning into my father. There were big boats in the river. Big boats coming. And, uh, you know, we, we were held up on a crossing over to North Shields. It's only five minutes. By a big boat coming (laughs) by. and Oh my goodness, it was so exciting to see them, to see proper ships. And uh, we went over to the other side. The other side. I'm not going to say whether it was the dark side or the light side. (laughs) We went for a walk and found the fish and chip shop. And uh, we had something to eat there before we came back. And there were more boats. More boats. There was the, the ferry going over to Europe, it went down the river, and then there was a another big boat came up the river as well, as well as little fishing boats yeah. as well. So it was nice to see the river um, looking so busy. Yeah. So, so that, that was our week. Yes. It and was. we came home yesterday. We came home. 
we are happy. We had a lovely week, but we're happy to be home. Happy to catch yeah, up, indeed. and especially for the the lovely morning that we had this morning, uh, where we had a, a wonderful family service. It was it was just so good, and our lovely new chairs that we've got yes. in the hall. Uh, so that was so so good. That was fantastic. Yeah. Well. Megan, I'm sorry you didn't come to the service a few weeks ago. She was in Inverness. Oh. It would have been lovely to see you, so hopefully if you come again, it will catch up soon. Yes. Yes. We're going to turn to another song now. Number 147. Number 147. Lord Jesus Christ, you have come to us. You are one with us, Mary's son, cleansing our souls from all their sin, pouring your love and goodness in. Jesus, our love for you we sing, living Lord. some of them when it's easy, sometimes when it's really just the simple joys in life that makes um, parenting worthwhile. So, yeah, what could I say? What could you say? You could <laughs> say a could lot. I, say? I could say a real lot, the times that my patience has been pushed to the limit. That's just by me. <laughs> um, I would say between our two kids, when the teenage, the teenage years, mm -hmm. Ireland was probably the easier, but then all of us too much like me, um, a very strong world. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Still is. Um, and Ireland's quite laid back, you know, he's horizontal, that he's just a bit lying flat. <laughs> but that doesn't mean to say that, you know, he doesn't get riled about things. Um, and I think sometimes we do um, test his patience. I think it's maybe a lot better now. Uh, I think so. I hope so. Uh -huh. I hope Rachel knows what she's letting herself in for. I think, like all parents, though, um, there comes a point when you can't help but boast about your children. Uh, and those moments when, you know, we, we've gone along to school concerts, for example. Um, I remember the, the time that Ola was playing with the North Lanarkshire Schools Orchestra uh, in um, Glasgow. The concert hall. In the Royal Concert Hall in Glasgow. Yeah. And uh, she had one note to play, but it seemed to go on forever and ever and ever. And at one point, I'm just saying, breathe. Will you just breathe? Yeah. I don't know how she was able to hold that note for as long I as know, she I remember Betty McKeith saying to me, 
Could you not take a breath? <laughs> but absolutely. But she was the only one who was playing that note. But equally with Erland, um, those times when it was particularly his acting was allowed to um, have its full full um, whack. Uh, where I think school when he had to do a pantomime and he came out of school I remember primary school when he came out and said I said so how did you get on with the auditions for the pantomime and he said well they want me to be one of the ugly sisters and he was quite dejected about it and I said to him that's fantastic he says what do you mean I said that means you are one of the two funniest guys in the school. And he's like, how? Oh. I said, it's the two funniest guys in the school that will be chosen to be the, the, the ugly sisters. And suddenly his whole outlook on it yeah. changed. Yeah. And he threw himself Certainly completely did. into One that. One of the three inch heels, I mean, come on. I yes, can't, can't even absolutely. Look. Jumped, jumped off the stage. And ran right down the, the aisle in the yeah. the auditorium, or the gym, as it was. So, are you frozen? I'm frozen. Oh, oh no, I'm, it's okay. Still it's going. still going here. It yes. could be my device. Yeah. yeah. I remember going to Edinburgh City Core to hear the youth band. Uh huh. And I remember Erland getting to his feet, and I just thought, oh. Oh no, you know, you know that moment because what's he going to say? What's he going to say? What's he going to do? But I mean, what I didn't know was it was all scripted because Chris, uh, the youth band leader, was very good at, at getting the kids to didn't have a chairperson. All the kids introduced, and he was introducing. Um, I think it was Matt Fuller playing a horn oh, solo, gosh. and he, he said about the piece and goes, "Come on, Matthew, get on your feet," you know. And um, I was like, "Oh, for goodness' sake." But I remember you having a chat to um, Lieutenant Colonel Alan Burns, who said, that young boy, he's got folk. He's got folk eating out of the he's palm of his hand. Yeah. Who's he? And I said, that's my that's son. My son. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, it's that moment when you think, oh no, oh, if I could crawl under this chair now, I would do it. <laughs> um, yeah, we've, we supported both of them in so many things. Every Saturday I used to go to the juniors. Um, on a Saturday you would go to football with Erland I used my day was shopping in, in Glasgow and going to the conservatory to meet up with Ola she had um, she was doing um, French horn and piano at the conservatory juniors and it was lovely to meet up with lots of people mm. there um, and she had that opportunity and it was also good uh, to go and catch up with Erland when he was doing his drama um, and we tried to go as much as we possibly could but I also think the very very simple things are some of the most important um, things. And, and, you know, we talk about um, when we, we took the, the trip down to Hushnish, <laughs> which is a road that goes up and down and all over the place on the Isle of Harris. It was, yeah. a, it was a... We decided we were going to have a picnic somewhere. We were going to go down. We would just see where we ended up. And we called along my friend Jenny. She mm-hmm. had been having a particularly difficult time. And we knocked on the door and there was no replies. So I thought, well, maybe she just can't face seeing people today. So we got back in the car and we were at the end of the drive and we realised she was waving at the door. And we said what we were away to do and the kids said, oh, please, please, please come. So we went. So we ended up at Hushnish. Yes. Yes. Sorry, I'm going to tissue. You need another tissue. I need another tissue. So, yeah, the kids got out of the car and ended up chasing chickens on the beach at Hushnish. So that forever in our minds, Hushnish is... Hushnish. Hushnish is associated with chickens, chickens on the beach. And then we were up the Clisham and there had been snow, so we built a Clisham's snowman. Clisham's a big hill. Yeah, it's a big hill in Harris. Um, we built a snowman up there. We had our makeshift picnic in the car. Mm-hmm. Um, just went to the, the co-op, bought a bag of donuts and lots of wee snacky kind of things and just bottles of juice and bags of crisps and goodness knows what. Biscuits and everything. But I, I and, think... Um, I think the most important thing that we can give our children is time. Time and love. Uh, and those are the, the, the things that I think we've tried to, to do as much as we possibly could for our children. Sometimes, you know, it's great to be able to boast about all the wonderful things that they achieve. Yeah. 
but some of those very, very simple moments to be able to stop and take pleasure in what's happening in those moments yeah. is really, really vital. I do remember after Ola had Seth and she said, Mum, we haven't a clue what we're doing. And I said, and you think we knew what we were doing? <laughs> you haven't turned out so bad. And uh, she's doing okay with the uh, Seth and Jack and Lila. And, uh, well, they're not starving, so she must be doing something right. Yes, yes. <laughs> so on, on Mother's Day, you know, thank you, Mum. Thank you. Mother-in-law. Yes, thanks, mum Thank and mother-in-law. Thank you, those who have acted as mum to me as well. And uh, we are ever so grateful. Yes, all, for the, all, diff all yes. the different cores that we've had, where we've had surrogate mums and surrogate grannies for the kids and sur surrogate aunties. <laughs> We have loved it and I know some of you are watching. So thank you so much for your contribution to our lives. Our lives are the richer for knowing you and for the contribution that you've played in the lives of our children. They, they do remember you uh, very fondly. So I'm going to sing again. Sing again. And it's song number 142. I love to hear the story which angel voices tell. How once the King of Glory came down on earth to dwell. I am both weak and sinful, but this I surely know. The Lord came down to save me because he loved me so. I love to hear the story which angel voices tell. How once the King of Glory came down on earth to dwell. So today we are obviously considering the importance of mothers on Mother's Day. And there are several times where uh, mothers are mentioned within the scriptures. You know, we've, we've um, sung some Christmas songs um, as we think again about Mary being the mother of Jesus and the example that she gave, the love that she showed, the, the obedience that she showed to God and how she did her best to bring Jesus up in the best way. But the scripture reading from uh, Matthew chapter 18 is an instance where, well, the disciples are trying to get one up on each other. Now, yeah, Isabel was able to show the Mother's Day card that she'd got from Ireland. What does it say on the front? Um... Just going to go and get oh, the card get so that we so that we get it get absolutely absolutely right. right. Try not to trip over any wires. Hopefully, you you're, you're going further than you needed yeah, to go there. I'm going to give you all response as well. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Trying to get one up on each other. Thank you. Here's the card from Ireland. If at first you don't succeed, try again. Happy Mother's Day from your second born. Erland being the second child. <laughs> so I, I sent it 
um, I sent a picture of it to Ola and her response was, what he means is you had such a positive experience of parenting first time around, you wanted to repeat it and unfortunately you can't improve on perfection. Who's the most important? Oh my goodness, it's an age old thing, isn't it? Who's the favourite child? Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you remember we used to have that thing where if Erland was in the middle, he would go, I'm special, because I'm, I'm in the, the middle. middle. Uh -huh. uh, and Ola would soon push him out of the way. She certainly would. And be special in her <laughs> eyes. Yes, they're both special to us. But they're not the only children to, to crave that special place. They are special just because of who they are. There is no one else like them. They are individual. So in this instance, here's the disciples. And as it's told in this scripture, then it's the disciples who are asking, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Elsewhere, we get James and John's mother trying to push them forward to be the greatest. One to sit at his right and one to sit at his left. In response here, Jesus asks for a little child to be brought to him. Now that in itself is very telling. There were children standing about. Children had been brought to listen to Jesus there. Children had been brought, probably, by their mothers to hear the words of Jesus. The mothers had heard about Jesus. They'd heard about his teaching and they wanted to hear for themselves, but also they wanted their children to hear. Now, one of the fantastic things this morning was parents wanting to bring their children so that they could hear about Jesus so that they could have the opportunity to be welcomed into a church family. They were welcomed by their family. They were supported by their worldwide family, as it turns out. But they were welcomed as part of a church family today. And it's one of those things that's becoming less and less significant to some people. They put naming ceremonies in place of coming to give thanks to God for their children. They don't make the promise to bring them up in a Christian way. Where this morning we were delighted that a couple brought their four children to come and promise to bring them up as Christian examples to try and show them the best way. Jesus here takes a child who was listening and stood the child in the middle and said, if you want to be important, become as a little child. Don't be childish, but become as a child. Now, what was happening was the disciples were being childish. I want to be more important than you are. Jesus is going to pay more attention to me because I'm his favourite. That was the kind of nonsense that was coming from the disciples at that point. Jesus says, become like a child. Just trust me. Have faith in me. It's not about you. Just have faith in me. Humble yourself like a little child. The child who's trusting. The child who's putting their hand up for the adult to give them some security and guidance. <coughs> and then they are told, whoever welcomes a child like this in my name, welcomes me. And that's turning on its head. They're thinking because the children were supposed to be seen and not heard. Sit in the corner, be quiet. Do nothing until you're told to do anything. But Jesus was saying, come, bring them, put them in the centre. Look at them, learn from them. They have much to teach us. And if you've ever tried to work a mobile phone nowadays, you'll understand you, you've got much to learn 
from your children or your grandchildren. But Jesus here is saying, become trusting like this child. And how important the child is? It's better to have a millstone tied round your neck and you're dropped in the sea if you cause one of these to stumble and fall. That's how important the child is. We can be so full of ourselves, so important in ourselves that we actually lose sight of the fact that Jesus wants us to help each other, not just to help ourselves. So to the mothers who put the children first, who've shown the example, who've been there to hold the hands when the children were afraid, when the children were ill, when the children didn't know which way to turn, we thank you. And for those who have led them to the Saviour by their living, by their words, by their actions, we thank you even more because that's the greatest gift that you could ever have given to a child. Before we finish tonight, we're going to sing another song, song number 857. Number 857. This is one that I gave to you to play. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make my life into a melody. I'm going to praise my Saviour all day long. I'm going to make my life into a symphony, a glorious symphony of song, for God will fill me with his power, my pathway trace. He's going to make my life into a miracle, a mighty miracle of grace. This is quite high, because yeah. I can't change what? it. Okay. <laughs> Take a drink quick. <laughs> I'm going to make my life into a melody. I'm going to praise my Saviour all day long. I'm going to make my life into a symphony, a glorious symphony. Oh, so, oh, God may fill me with this power. sharing with us again this evening we really appreciate uh, your encouragement we appreciate your presence with us and we pray that uh, you have been blessed as you've shared with us and we pray that you have a good week and uh, remember clocks go forward next week and it will be a recorded meeting next sunday uh, but we look forward to sharing with you then and let's just share in our benediction and so we pray may god cradle you in love May God gently comfort you. May God whisper tenderly to you. And may God bring you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining with us again this evening. We hope you enjoyed the stories.
<laughs> we hope you're challenged by the scripture and we are grateful for all that you do to make a difference to people's lives. God bless you. Good night. Good night. God, God bless. bless.